results of the British election shocked many across the UK and the world when British Prime Minister Theresa May lost her majority in the British Parliament two weeks before Britain is due to start negotiating Brexit, Britain's exit from Europe. The result has caused many to ponder what is going on. Clearly, Bible prophecy spoke about the need for Britain to exit the European Union based on the role it must play as the merchant of Tarshish with its young lions who stand opposed to the Russo-European Confederacy that will eventually sweep into the land. We read in Ezekiel 38 verse 13 that Sheba and Dedan and the merchants of Tarshish, with all the young lions thereof, shall say unto thee, Art thou come to take a spoil? Hast thou gathered thy company to take a prey, to carry away silver and gold, to take away cattle and goods, to take a great spoil? We also know that it is not part of the European beast of Revelation chapter 17 that will make war with the Lamb, as we read in verse 14. These will make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Rather, it is part of a group of nations which will submit to the Lord Jesus Christ at the moment of crisis. As we read in Psalm 72 verses 10 and 11, The kings of Tarshish and of the isles shall bring presents. The kings of Sheba and Seba shall offer gifts. Yea, all kings shall fall down before him. All nations shall serve him. Also, Britain will be involved in assisting the Jews to return to the land in these latter days. As we read in Isaiah chapter 60 and verses 9 to 10, Surely the isles shall wait for me, the ships of Tarshish first, to bring thy sons from far, their silver and their gold with them, unto the name of the Lord thy God, and to the Holy One of Israel, because he hath glorified thee. And the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their kings shall minister unto thee. For in my wrath I smote thee, but in my favor have I had mercy on thee. So one has to wonder what on earth is going on in the political world when the Prime Minister, who is supposed to lead Britain out of the European Union, loses her majority. This is when we need to step back and remember one clear fact that is outlined in Daniel chapter 4, verse 17. This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will and setteth up over it the basest of men. The angels are at work behind the scenes to give the reins of world government into the hands of those who will bring about the purpose of God. Remember in the late 1940s, if Christadelphians had been voters in the national British election, which we do not do because we believe in the principle of Daniel 4 verse 17, but if we had been, undoubtedly we would have voted for Winston Churchill, the politician and most friendly to Israel. Yet, Churchill lost the election before the war was even over. That's the Second World War. Into power came Clement Attlee and Ernest Bevan, a self-hating Jew determined to demonstrate his Britishness over his Jewishness. Their policies and restrictions on immigration post-Holocaust caused revolt in Palestine amongst the Jewish population and ended up with Britain relinquishing its mandate and the formation of the State of Israel. The very opposite of what we would have voted for caused the very thing that God had in his plan. A sovereign state of Israel answering to the my people of Israel described by God in Ezekiel chapter 38. It is too early to tell exactly what the angels are doing, but we do know the overall outcome. It was very interesting to hear Nigel Farage's comments on May's blunder during an interview with a panel from the USA's Fox News. Here are some excerpts. Well, I think Mrs. May makes a mess of it. I mean, she had a parliamentary majority. We triggered Article 50. The negotiations with the European Union are due to start in 11 days' time. And the next election was not due until 2020. She forced this fresh election upon the country, and she's failed. And while she's just about crept back with the support of some Northern Irish Unionists, I think her credibility is completely and fatally damaged, not just just here, but in the eyes of the European Union too.
I have to say, I mean, there were no obstacles in our course at all. Whilst her majority wasn't big, it was big enough. Uh, and she's risked everything just to give herself, you know, an increased majority, uh, and it really has come undone. Well, if the election had gone about ten seats the other way, we'd be facing the prospect of Prime Minister Corbyn. He's basically a Marxist. Um, he's cozied up over the years to Hamas, who he called his friends, his buller, uh, the IRA, and he absolutely loathes the United States of America. Him becoming Prime Minister would have been a disaster for relations between our two countries in terms of security, defence and trade. So thank goodness it didn't happen. But boy, he got close. Yeah, look, I mean, Mrs May will be at the Palace to see the Queen in 15 minutes' time, as per our constitutional requirements. Uh, and uh, she, I think... To form a government, to form a coalition government, she has to go there as the sitting Prime Minister. So constitutionally, uh, she wasn't going to resign this morning. Uh, but I think she will not be there for very long at all. Uh, who will it be? Uh, my guess is the two front runners would be Boris Johnson or David Davis, uh, both of whom were on the Brexit side. You see, the mystery, the mystery was Mrs May voted Remain. Mrs May was for staying in the European Union and yet became leader of a Brexit party. Oh. She went into this election lacking sincerity because she did not believe the words that she was speaking. And, and the voters and the Tory party that. now must, must, must get a Brexiteer to lead it. Yeah. Well, Miss May, true to the Constitution, went to the palace and returned to Number 10 Downing Street to announce to the British people her intention to form a new government in a very stone-faced speech. I have just been to see Her Majesty the Queen, and I will now form a government, a government that can provide certainty and lead Britain forward at this critical time for our country. This government will guide the country through the crucial Brexit talks that begin in just 10 days and to deliver on the will of the British people by taking the United Kingdom out of the European Union. What the country needs more than ever is certainty. And having secured the largest number of votes and the greatest number of seats in the general election, it is clear that only the Conservative and Unionist Party has the legitimacy and ability to provide that certainty by commanding a majority in the House of Commons. As we do, we will continue to work with our friends and allies in the Democratic Unionist Party in particular. Our two parties have enjoyed a strong relationship over many years, and this gives me the confidence to believe that we will be able to work together in the interests of the whole United Kingdom. This will allow us to come together as a country and channel our energies towards a successful Brexit deal that works for everyone in this country, securing a new partnership with the EU which guarantees our long-term prosperity. That's what people voted for last June. That's what we will deliver. Now let's get to work. Well, whether Mrs. May is able to stay in power remains to be seen. It will be a tough fight for her to do so. It could well be that either Boris Johnson or David Davis replace her in the very near future, and the Conservative establishment may be forced to have a Brexiteer as the next leader, and consequently the Prime Minister. Well, politics is about power and not so much principles. A government will sell its soul to stay in power. In many minority government situations, it is the marginal group that can swing its votes over to the government and crown it, preventing a vote of non-confidence that either forces another election or has the opposition party form the government if they can form a coalition. This has been seen in Israel, where a coalition government has to be formed because there are so many political parties. Often, the radical views and policies of the smaller parties have to be taken into account. In Israel, it has served to stiffen up the politicians in order for them to stay in power. They have had to respect the wishes of the religious right. 
Well, what is absolutely fascinating is who the kingmakers are in Britain. No matter who is to lead the Conservative government, they have to make a deal with the DUP or the Democratic Unionist Party. The Guardian newspaper paper reported with some dismay, the DUP will back the Tory government on its next budget and prevent it being brought down by motions of no confidence. However, the DUP will decide on support for the Conservatives on other issues in Parliament on a vote-by-vote -vote basis. There has been a mixture of anger and bewilderment within the Westminster establishment, Tory as well as Labour, over the way the DUP has suddenly become the central player in shaping who governs the UK. The nine men and one woman who are going back to the House of Commons under the DUP banner include some who are born-again Christians and deny Darwin's theory of evolution. They are also among the many opponents of gay marriage, equality, and even minor reform to Northern Ireland's near-total ban on abortion. End quote. Well, isn't this interesting? The kingmakers in England are religious Christians who believe in creation and oppose gay marriage. Well, Reuters went on to report the following. British voters spent Friday frantically googling the name of a small northern Irish party whose 290,000 votes and 10 seats in Parliament hold the balance of power in the national parliament representing the United Kingdom's 65 million people. The article went went on to describe the beginnings of the DUP party. It stated some remembered it as the party of Ian Paisley, the firebrand Protestant cleric who once heckled the Pope himself, calling him the Antichrist. The DUP forged its compatible brand of British nationalism in a Protestant areas of the 1970s Belfast as the Bloody Troubles pitched hardline unionists against the uh, or to remain part of Britain against mainly Catholic nationalists seeking a union or a united Ireland. Others noted that the party now has one of the most socially conservative in Europe, having sought to maintain some of its constituents' strictest restrictions on abortion and consistently opposed gay marriage. It recently backed the right of a Belfast bakery to refuse to make a cake with a gay rights slogan and proposed a law to allow religious business people to refuse to serve people where that would conflict with their religious beliefs. At least one senior party member has defended creationism, the theory that the world was created by God 10,000 years ago. End quote. So the kingmaker in the general election who will hold the most influence over the new, new government, whoever leads it, comes from a Christian, creationist, anti-Catholic standpoint. Some of its leaders see the issue of the European Union for what it is, a tool of the Antichrist, the papacy, who are the religious harlot and ride the beast and shape its policies. No wonder the establishment, both Catholic and Labour, have their knees knocking. If it were possible, and it's not, the Reverend Ian Paisley would be giggling in his grave if he knew the party that he formed will be one of the most influential in bringing Britain out of Europe. Obviously, the angels know what they are doing. It is exciting to see the hand of God at work amongst the nations, bringing about his will. Stay tuned to see how the Most High rules in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomsoever he wills. For the Bible in the News, this has been Jonathan Bowen joining you.